At one time, the U.S. saw Russia as the main cyber warfare opponent. As early as 1998, the country was accused of hacking into U.S. government systems. But these days, America fears a new cyber spy, China. That is the country that we're most worried about. Rick Howard is a retired lieutenant colonel of the U.S. Army. He spent the last two years of his career as the chief of the Army's Computer Emergency Response Team, the Cyber SWAT Team of the U.S. military. China, in their own doctrine, their own military doctrine, says they'll be ready to take on the U.S. by 2025. They're not going to do that tank on tank. That's not what their plan is. Their plan is to go at us with asymmetric warfare, using the Internet as part of their attack vehicle. Rick believes that Chinese hackers are currently mining U.S. government computers using tools that are similar to the Microsoft Word virus. They steal every document on those hard drives, every Word document, every PowerPoint document, every Excel document, and they bring them back to China. We're talking about millions of documents. Stealing national secrets over the net has replaced old-fashioned espionage. But Rick's greatest concern is that the Chinese military is training and recruiting hackers. The PLA in China uh, recruit hackers from um, the Chinese population and they train them in military information warfare tactics. They give them a regular salary so that they can go and try to penetrate uh, U.S. government and other government institutions. In 2007, the U.S. claimed China cyber attacked the Pentagon. The Chinese government officially denies these claims. So how vulnerable are we to a cyber attack? And what exactly would it mean? The complete breakdown of financial health, traffic, air traffic, government structure of a country. You have to concern yourself with the possibility of a digital Pearl Harbor. I think there's, a, there's, there's always the possibility that a rogue terrorist group were to have a very significant denial of service attack. And if there's anything that people need to understand in cyberspace is that this is hard stuff. You have to take it serious. So if and when an attack comes, are we ready? He reasons that now it's too risky. We're not just looking at black hat hackers, we're not looking at kids, we're not looking at script kiddies, but we're really looking at a coordinated effort uh, sponsored by the Chinese government um, against uh, not only the United States, but the West in general. Michael Calce has written a book about his life as a notorious hacker. I couldn't stand back knowing what was going on and what's going to happen and how, how bad it's getting. Eight years after his attack, he says he could do it all over again if he wanted to. Because they haven't done anything about it. They say they're investing this into internet security and this and that, but the situation is only getting worse for everybody. Attacks are increasing. The number of viruses has doubled in a year. And places like the Pentagon ward off a cyber attack nearly every day. Is cybersecurity a significant threat to the critical infrastructure of Canada and the world? Absolutely. No question. This is serious stuff. It is supposed to be a little bit turbulent. It is supposed to be a little bit uncontrollable. And to have that openness and that freedom, you have to deal with the other things. The interconnected nature of the Internet and critical infrastructures is a point of significant vulnerability for modern society. We really have to think carefully about putting critical infrastructure online. I would prefer critical stuff to be disconnected. And when I mean disconnected, I mean that they are in separate cables. Increasingly, all aspects of our lives are funneled through the Internet. What's at stake is impossible to dismiss. Because the 9-11 Commission, their summary, of the 9-11 events was that it was a failure of imagination. 
And I think the one thing we don't want to do again is for our imaginations to fail.